Your father was uh, John Fraley Feller? No, that was my um, grandfather. Or your grandfather was John, and your father was? Ernest. Ernest Feller. He was the baby of the family. Okay. Like I am, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you had brothers and sisters? Three sisters. Three sisters. Okay. No brothers. Uh -huh. And how about your uncles? Uh, what were their families? Then? They were all had uh, girls. Nobody had any boys. Okay. Uh, I had an aunt that had a, a boy down in Poughkeepsie. He's he long gone. He worked for IBM. And... Uh, older than me. He's long since retired. Okay. Now, can we assume that since you're the only boy in the family that that's why you inherited the farm? Um, possibly, but I stayed here with, to, took care of my mother and father, you know. Okay. And uh, I had a sister here and she was doing some bad things and my mother came out. I was working for the Roosevelt Library then. And uh, that they couldn't make out on the farm. So I said, well, if you want me to come home, let me know. So, oh, well. And I was thin, about 140 pounds then. I said, oh, you'll never be able to do it. Well, I, I did, and I came home. I've been here ever since. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, uh, and Dad, he would, you know, sometimes you think your father's kind of dumb, but he was pretty smart. He built that storage in uh, 1935, and uh, it was the only, there was one other private storage over across the river someplace. We went over to look at it. And uh, uh, we put that up. Now we got, well, then you went through private storages. Now there isn't many of them left. Now this is the storage place just yeah, across the street. Yeah. Uh -huh. Built in 1935. Yeah, we opened in 36, and we started selling apples by the bushel to local people. And uh, they said, oh, you can't do that. You can't afford to do that. And then in about 19, I believe it was 1950, I went into the pick your own, and they told me I was crazy. So <laughs> now look at it, you know. And now instead of selling by the bushel. You were selling by the pound. Okay. Yeah. Now, when did you start farming? When did you leave the library and, and start farming? That was uh, uh, about 1950. Okay. I'd been home and I left, and my dad brought a brother in law in on the farm. And I said, well, I couldn't support three families, so I left. And then, of course, they didn't. We're not very good. He was he was a dairy farmer, mm -hmm. and uh, Dad was a fruit farmer. Then I came home. Fifty, I was twenty years old. Okay. Well, what was your mother's name? Marietta Rockefeller. Okay. And she's from where? Um, uh, where? Yeah. Well, she lived, they, the family lived around here. Okay. But uh, they were, all the Rockefellers are relation. They, uh, oh, what, governor? Roy. Really? He's a relative. Okay. So, uh, governor, vice president, all kinds of things like that. And I never voted for him. <laughs> <laughs> now, who did you marry? <laughs> uh, Janet. Ann Coons, and uh, uh, what, that was, oh, what year was that? Uh, I don't know, huh? 1950. Was it 50? We got married Christmas Eve. Really? There was a little bit of, uh, it wasn't, but sort of a shotgun wedding, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Now, was she a local girl? Yes, really, uh, but not local, local, but her family came from Hudson, okay. Columbia County. But, of course, they were working here. Her father was working for uh, uh, Boys Farm when, they, when, I, when I met her. 
go. But then. Now, who were the children? Did she have children? She? Yes. Yeah, she had three boys and a, they had three boys. Okay. Johnny, Ernie, and Brian. In that order. And they're all in Florida now. Okay. I don't want anything to do with this. No with worry. a farm or this area, I got my uh, youngest one, Brian's coming back sometime this month, I guess. His, his daughter's here. She graduates from school this year, his, his youngest daughter. Mm -hmm. So, And his oldest daughter is a teacher down in Roosevelt High School. Uh, but they're all girls. <coughs> and my oldest son, Johnny, he had all girls. The one in the middle had two boys. <laughs> boys were not too prevalent in this family. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. so. Now, where did you go to school? Me? Yes. Well, Red Hook uh, Central and to uh, the, the uh, school in Upper Red Hook across from the Dutch Reformed Church. That building there was a schoolhouse. Okay, that's when the old, where the old paint factory is now. Paint factory? I think, well, not the paint factory, the uh, paint store, the soap factory. Huh? No. It was, no? It was up, Upper Red Hook. Pardon? In Upper Red Hook? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, across from the Dutch Reformed Church. It's now a sound studio, oh, sound okay. business. But that uh, the, the the building is still there. It's okay. still it's a house of home now. It was a beauty. Two story. It was upstairs and downstairs. Uh, downstairs was one through four, and upstairs was uh, four through eight. And then the high school was down in Red Hook. The paint store there now. That uh, uh, what's the name of Little Red Hook? That was oh. a a high school. I burned okay. when I was a kid. Okay. So after that, they went to the Central School, and I went to that, I believe, the fourth grade. Okay. Now, about the farm, who built the farmhouse? Here? Who built it? Yes. I don't know, way before my time. 17, so I understand, 1746. Okay. Mud and straw walls in the, in the kitchen part of it, the original part. But, uh, I don't know. It was in the handed down from family to family, I guess. You know, from one generation to the other. Now, did you ever live there? To me? Yes. Oh yeah. For until I was a kid, I was born there. Or I might have been born in a hospital. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I lived there for over, uh, 17 years, I guess. So I went. I was in the Air Force. I went from there to the Air Force. Okay. And then back home, and married, and Statsburg, and so forth, and then back to the farm. Okay, now, is this the next house you lived in? No, or, or? Uh, the, the tenant house, the little little gray house down there. Oh, down past the... Below uh, the storage, okay. yeah. I lived there for about 15 years, I guess, with the family. Okay. And I built this house. Because well, with three boys, it wasn't big enough, you know? And uh, right after, uh, about a year after I built the house, me and my wife split. She went off for parts that were better than what she had here. But she never found her. <laughs> okay. Now, did you ever remarry? Uh, yes. To Mary's mother. Okay. And what was her name? Ruth. Uh, Ruth Harvey was her maiden name. Ruth Roosevelt. And uh, she also left uh, for better. <laughs> hmm. Now, where did how did Doris come into the picture? Well, uh, Ruth. Didn't want Mary really. She's a little baby, sort of little girl, and uh, I was going out with Doris, and 
uh, Ruth said, I said I would take care of Mary if, if she, you know, she said, oh no, but anyhow, uh, she called me. She said, you mean that about what you said about Mary? I said, yes. So she said, I'll bring her up. And then I was talking to Doris. The Doris said, if you want me to, I'll move up there and, and live with you and take care of Mary. So it's fine. So that's how we got together. She was uh, really the only mother that Mary ever really knew, you know. Okay. So, and I think she was here about 30 years. Uh, Doris just passed away in the recent... Uh, Pardon? Doris just passed away yeah. recently. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Did any of your uncles work on the farm with you? Maybe when they were before the well drilling business. They all went into the well drilling business, and I imagine if they had it, they lived on the farm, so they probably worked on it. And uh, I don't know when the split was, but my uncle Warren uh, went to Rhinebeck. He always had been there that I knew, but he had a pretty new house. And uh, he, he was a well driller, too. And they fight back and forth about drilling well. <laughs> really? Well, this, uh, on this uh, picture <coughs> we gave you earlier, uh, huh? this picture of the uh, Feller Brothers uh, well drilling rig. Yeah. Now, were all the brothers working together in well drilling, or did they have their separate businesses? Well, uh, I don't, maybe Warren was in it too once upon a time, but uh, uh, what I remember was Dad and John and Bill. And then Dad took over the farm, and John and Bill took over the well drilling business. So they, uh, oh, they drilled most of the wells in the area up to then. And uh, Red Hook, the water supply, they had a New York State competition on the best water, and Red Hook had the best water in the whole state. 99.44, they said something like that. But uh, they were real proud that they put that in. And now the so water system, and the, they've had other guys drilling wells, and uh, he's blowing up pipes every now and then. I think the the wells are never sealed into the rock, right? You know, and it's probably mud coming in, or you know, mud seam. But the well field over the over by the where well, used to be the farmers co-op there, the, that's where all the wells are, and there's there's tremendous the water supply coming out of there. Bring that over, honey. Okay. You mentioned to me one time that uh, they were going to sell you the well drilling business. Yeah. Whatever happened there? Well, I was a young man just just married, you know. And Uncle John said, well, we'll tell you the business. And uh, I said, mm, okay. Uh, I was interested. Well, we'll let you have it for $50,000. <laughs> and eventually, I guess they sold it for like $500. Wow. Okay. Oh, boy, this is... Now, I believe that's a handmade... Uh, I think the date on there is 17 something. Wow, can you get a picture of this, John? This thing is fantastic. Get this stuff out of the way here. You want to go outside? Oh, this. Do you hold that camera on for this camera? What are we looking at? Like the family blanket. Oh, a blanket, yeah. Can you imagine they made that by hand? Yeah, this is amazing. Huh? Oh my gosh. What do you mean by hand? You mean just like this? I, I, on a, on a I, I don't know. On some kind of a loom? Hand stitch. 1848. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. January 1st. Oh, my that's gosh. my birthday. Is it? My gosh, this thing looks almost new. So, 1848. 1848. Now, wow. tell us, this thing, this says fellows. Can you tell us? How the name went from fellows no to idea. feller. 
that was a big question mark in my mind. But this has been handed down through the family to me. And the only fellas left is my one son in uh, Florida. And he, no interest up here. But he's got two sons. His sons are pretty good too. They're, they're good boys. Well, one boy, they're both pretty good, but the oldest one, he builds houses down there now. He's a good boy. I like him. Mm -hmm. uh, what all did you sell on the farm? What uh, what produce did you raise and sell? What now? What, what produce? Uh, what type of produce did, did you they sell? Animals? Well, did you have on the farm? Well, I've gone a little bit of everything. Vegetables, mostly fruit. But uh, now it's uh, apples, pears, peaches, cherries, nectarines, um, and all different kinds of apples. Now apples will start about early August. And they'll go on till November, just about. And peaches are going to start this month, I guess. Oh, great! The early ones. Uh, what about the paint pigments? How did huh? they, the paint pigments <clears throat> that they found here, how did they discover those? You know? I, I really don't know. It, it was uh, something that they talked about up here. There was a, an old road that just disappeared now, but it was there. They came up, not fairly Newmark Road, but it came up through the, through the fields here. That was there where the paint went up and down. I would say be, maybe before that one, but it was dead end up here. And I came up here when I was a kid, and there was, when this house was, there was a big flat rock with holes around it, and uh, this is where I wanted the house. So we, uh, I had a D8 and a, with a ripper on it, and my good Lord, uh, it was red paint. And there was red rock. It bleaches out after a while, you know, but the driveway and everything was red rock. <laughs> mm. yeah. uh, does that does that pigment just come out of rock or do you have to dig way down for it? They crushed the rock, I guess. Yeah. And once upon a time Red Hook, the town of Red Hook, up where my big pond is, they had to, this was their gravel bank that they got for all the roads in Red Hook. And uh, they had a stone crusher here, big old thing that uh, they put the rocks in, shovel them in, and they keep turning and busting the rocks up. Now, is this the pond just off of uh, Feller Newmark Road, or is it the pond toward the rear of your property? What? Uh, the, the pond that they, where they used to dig for the, uh, the gravel, it's the one in the back. That's about three quarters of a mile back. Okay. And up there is also where they uh, had a uh, iron ore mine on the hill. When did they mine iron ore? No, oh, got no idea, but it wasn't good. It was not strong enough, not enough iron in the, in the rock. But you dig the rock out, bust up for any reason, and the rock rusts. <laughs> like ironwood. Yep. You know? <coughs> uh, the records show the the uh, papers that the Historical Society bought uh, shows that there were a number of purchases of coal, lumber, and hardware that was on an account. They weren't paid for, but they were just bought on time. Uh, was the family hard pressed at that time? Did they run into? Financial problems. Uh, it, it, it could be. See, originally, the, what I understand, my uh, cousin researched the family back to uh, just about to England, and uh, they owned a great 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 grandfather, whatever, owned the Aldrich estate, and he got to uh, uh, drinking too much. And I guess he lost it, and I believe they moved up here from there. Now, this, the farmhouse down here might have been a summer ho house or something, you know? So that's as far as I know. That's what I heard. 
That's what she told me. Hey, during uh, the Depression and during Prohibition, would would you have ever have distilled anything on the premises or to help with something? I, I still got, yeah, I still have a, an old still, part of a still, uh-huh. a boiler. It, it, it's still here, but uh, the, uh, the whole town really was involved in Prohibition, booze, and so forth. Uh, I don't think my dad and uncles had too much to do with it, maybe having a drink now and then, but uh, my one uncle, uh, aunt's husband, he made uh, moonshine or whatever. Uh, uh, he had a, where the Hearthstone Motel was, that was a uh, cider mill. And he used that cider to make Applejack. And they made it here. It was delivered down to uh, New York. And I had a cousin that was, uh, Gus Shaw was, uh, he drove back and forth with a truck. <laughs> but yeah, there was, uh, I've got, I think over in the woods there, I got an old copper boiler that some, I don't know how they would use it. I do know how to make it. Uh, Oh, maybe 20 years ago, this guy came over and he told me about it. He was from, well, he was off the boat. So he made me up a, took a pressure cooker and made me up a, a still. And I would, I used to sell cider and I made hard cider, never drank it. And uh, you would take hard cider and then distill it. And uh, that's tough. When it came out here, it's pretty tough. <laughs> 120 proof or something like that. Oh. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about uh, your childhood or growing up on the farm or all the years that you've been here or other things that you think might be uh, worth our learning? Well, I don't know. Uh, well, no. You've probably heard that George Washington was in this area. That was again before my time, but there's a place in Up Red Hook. It used to be a hotel. Now I guess it, it they, people live in it. But he was there, and up just off of our farm, up on the hill up there, the land used to belong to uh, Reifenberg. There's a big flat rock there, probably 40 feet across. Now it's covered with rambles and so forth. But I was up there when I was a kid, and they had a a uh, pig roast or a cookout up there on that rock, and George Washington was up there. That was a thing that people would talk about, you know. So, uh, but that now there's a development there, but not not exactly where that is. But Spencer Drive, it's just off of Spencer Drive. You mentioned one time uh, the about the graveyard that's uh, over on uh, what is now Larry Thetford's property. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Uh, who's buried there? Uh, when they were buried? Why they were buried? I I've, I've got the uh, records. Some <coughs> some place, but there was somebody that lived next door there to Larry, and uh, was stealing the gravestones, using them for walks a walk or something, that's what Larry told me. And he went after him and uh, I guess he got him back, I don't know. But before that, I've got a paper here, some guy from Ohio or something came in and he wanted to know where the graveyard was, I've got no idea. So he researched it and he found it. And uh, he took all the names off the graves and I think it was 17 fellers there and two Meads. And what I, the way I read it was the Meads were, came around later and maybe they didn't have any place to get buried so they buried them there, you know? That's the way I could uh, figure it out. But there were, uh, and there were uh, all old names there. Well, my granddaughter, Sarah, that was the name in there. Uh, 
oh, uh, what was it? Lloyd Fred. Fred, there was a Fred Feller. That, that name popped up a couple, three times in the ancestry. When was the last person buried there, do you know? Mary, can you look at my closet and see if you can find that piece of paper? <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> I, I've got no idea. Probably uh, eighteen something. Oh. oh, so it's been quite some time since. Then. Pardon? It's been quite some time then. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that goes back. Uh, now there's a lot of fellers uh, in the uh, Lutheran cemetery too. That used to be the family church, and of course when they came over from Germany, everybody was pretty much Lutheran, you know. Here, uh, my mother went from the Lutheran Church to the Methodist Church, and the family was raised Methodist. But uh, the old family church was Lutheran. Why did they stop burying them at the Lutheran Church and start burying them on the farm? Why did they what? Why did they stop the stop using the cemetery at the Lutheran Church and start burying the fellers on the I farm? I think it was before the Lutheran Church. Oh, okay. I think it pretty, yeah, preceded. There's, uh, maybe not, maybe not, I don't know. I, there's fellas, and uh, there was, a, in, a, in the revolution, there was a Colonel Peter Feller, and I had a son by the name of Peter, but he died, died in childbirth. And uh, the revolution, the girls went into the DAR, and uh, my cousin, instead of going in with a with a colonel, he went in, she went in with a sergeant. I don't know why, but uh, I, I think our records show that sometime around the mid 1800s, early 1800s, uh, one of the fellers married a Fraley. Is that when the Fraley family became part of the Feller family? I've got no idea. I guess probably did because it's uh, well. There's Elmore Fraley and there's also uh, Herb Fraley. He's gone now, and that farm is going now to the, the development. But uh, they were uh, my parents were. They were all pretty close. Not exactly family, but uh, this one over here. Elmore, that wasn't even a farm when I was a kid. They had a one one apple tree, which was a, a crab apple, and about oh six or ten sheep. Hmm. And uh, the mother, Aunt Fanny, took in boarders from New York City. They come up and spend the summer there, and they that money put Elmore through college. <laughs> and then uh, Elmore got married, and he had his mother, his father died, Curtis, and uh, had his mother turn the farm over to him, and he kicked her out. Mm. She used to sit down here to the farmhouse and crying, looking at her, her home, that she couldn't, they wouldn't allow her to even go there. Mm. That was not very nice. Now, how's your relationship with the Fraley's today? Today? Mm -hmm. Not very good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, we, uh, well, we didn't find it. Yeah. It's a sheet of paper, really. Son of, okay. Uh, the Davy, now, Elmore and I used to be pretty good, but then he got to be JP. And uh, after that, he used to tell me how crooked the people were that ran Red Hook, how bad they were. And after he got into office, they would look like saints compared to him. But uh, the son, David, that now, he tried twice to move the, the property lines. And I was told to Elmore I was going to put him in jail. I said, well, we'll put him back wherever you want him. I said, no, I want him where they belong. So I went, that was one time we went back, and then he tried to move again. Mm. So uh, 
you know, we're not not very friendly. <laughs> but about oh seven or eight years ago, the air place caught on fire and I went over and put it out. It would have burned it with a heavy wind, would have burned them right out. And uh, Doris called up and talked to Davy's second wife here, the one now, Karen. And uh, she said, you know, I think that maybe you should know that, what John did. <coughs> so she came over <coughs> with a pie or something to thank me for, for putting the fire out. She says, it's uh, too bad you're not closer. I said, yeah, I just let it go over my head, you know. But I, if people do something to you once or twice, you don't, you don't go back after it. So, but that, that was that. Now, Irv Freely, we were, we were good friends. And whether we're family or not, that's my middle name, Freely, you know. So, uh, but there's, there's quite a connection. When I was a kid, that's all, all there was around here, you know? Uh, the place next door here was, uh, oh, where Newmark was, Phil Stickles owned that. And I believe once upon a time he was the, uh, maybe the supervisor or something. And it used to be Phil Stickles Road. And Newark wanted to change it. He said, well, I want to change the Newark Road. What the heck would you be? I wouldn't allow that. So he said, well, how about Newmark Feller Road? I said, no. He said, well, how about Feller Newmark? I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> now, who was Newmark? No. Who, New who was he? Yeah. He was a rich butcher from New York City that he made in a black market meat, Second World War, all kinds of money. And uh, of course he retired and then he died, but uh, I don't think he'd be too proud of how he made his money. You know, black and the Second World War, that was a, a kind of a tough time, you know. And of course he's Jewish, you know. And then you hear about how the the Jewish people in the Second World War, what happened to them? Uh, I don't know. Did he have his butcher shop in this area? Everywhere. Was his butcher shop in this area? Or was that down no, in the no, city? No, no, down the city. Okay. Yeah. No, he, he didn't do any business here. Okay. Now, how did the name Oriole come about for Oriole Farms or Oriole Orchards? Well, Oriole Orchards came from the Oriole paint mines. And, uh, my mother liked the name, so we said, all right, we'll call it Oriole Orchards. And it was what we called Orioles, we little yellow birds. And uh, that's what I, we still call an Oriole. But they also, they're, they're cherry bird, I guess. But there was lots of them around here, dozens of them. And uh, they hung a, a, like a sack nest in a tree. And they were right around the house down there, and now those even the trees, everything's gone. But that's yeah, she she sort of named it, or we did. Her dad is you know whatever. I had something to uh, to say about it, not much, kid, you know. But she was the one named it the Oriole, and picked up the name from here, the Oriole paint mines, and that apparently God knows where that came from. Somebody named that, you know. I understand recently you uh, sold the development rights to your property, yeah. that, uh, uh, which is good, that this place can't be developed. And do you see this staying in the family, the farm staying in the Feller family? I don't think so. I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt it. The only one that could really would be my grandson, Ernie's son, and he wouldn't know his, nothing about farming. The, the best he's ever been here is he came up one year, the three of them, and they went deer hunting. That's the closest they've been to the farm in 40 years, 35 years. And they, uh, I don't know if they have any boys or not, the, 
their grandsons. Do they have any boys, Mary? No, it's all girls. So the family is going to be, this branch of the family is going to be extinct. Now, when they came here, uh, what the heck was it, 1708, two brothers came over from England, and one settled in Rhinebeck, and the other settled in Saugerties. So that's probably why I have this map of uh, Ulster County and so forth. That would connect up. And uh, there's a lot of fellers over on the other side of the river, more than on this side. And there's fellers up in Germantown. We've traced them, they, their relation. But way back, uh, oh, I went, well, I went out with a girl. Her name was Feller, but they, used, they rented the camp from us. And uh, she would come to see her grandmother in Germantown. <coughs> and her grandmother, and something her grandmother and my grandmother were like sisters or something like that. So, but yeah, there's have, and this, this fellow from Ohio, I've got his address, he, he came in to research the, the cemetery, which he found, and uh, he's, he's done a lot of work on the family. But my sister Dot, uh, or cousin Dot, she really went into it in a big way. She got in the DAR, but then she kept right on going. And I believe she said she traced them all the way back to England. But everybody, I believe, England was a stepping off point. If you were Germany, you go to England to come over here, apparently. That's uh, what I think, or Holland or whatever. So I really don't know if I'm Dutch or German. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's about the same thing. Okay, I think this will probably conclude today's uh, interview with you and uh, give you a chance to think about maybe some other things you might want to tell us as time goes on. You may think of some other things you wish you'd uh, yeah, told us. Uh, no, if anything comes up, be nice to know. Did you know the name uh, George Fraley? He was Pardon? George Fraley. He apparently lived in the house I live in down the other end of Pitcher Lane at one time. George, you what now? George, uh, George, uh, George Fraley. George? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eugene uh, Budd mentions him. He remembers him when he was a kid. A George Feller? Fraley. Fraley. George Fraley. No. The Fraley's I knew would be Uncle Curtis. He died when I was a kid. That was Curtis, and that was Elmore's father. And uh, there wasn't much contact between them and us. I think apparently once upon a time where uh, Larry Thetford was, this might have all been under one farm. Because with the, uh, why would you live here and have a family cemetery up there? Mm -hmm. You know? And somebody told me that, uh, well, where boys was. Uh, Ed Brown before that, one of the, uh, like a grandfather or whatever, great, great, great grandfather, split it up and gave that farm to one of the kids and that farm to one of the kids and so forth around. But I remember, I've heard that, but when I was a kid. And they've got, uh, some of the lines, well, between us and uh, where Larry is, there should be straight squares, you know. Then, like uh, Tommy Tripp, uh, he didn't have water; he had cows. So he asked Dad, there was a swan, uh, spring in the woods. Could he fence that in for his cows? And Dad let him fence it in. Now it's there. It's that property. Elmore over here uh, uh, couldn't put uh, a fence in on a hill, so uh, Dan let him fence the, uh, down the hill, so the line goes this and it cuts off the corner. Back in the old days, that was okay. You don't do that anymore. Gosh, here's uh, Mary just giving us a copy of 
Is that it? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it shows. Uh, Pardon? Shows the seventeen uh, graves there. I thought you said you couldn't find it. It was on the floor. Hey. It was on the floor. Really? I was looking it up. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, there's two meads. Uh, 23, whatever. Mm. Yeah. Can I borrow this to yep. make us a copy? And then sure. I'll, I'll bring this back. This is Put that in our archive. Wow. Oh, that's, <laughs> my, that's my yearbook. Yeah. Uh, you look just like Brian. Huh? You look like your son, Brian. I do? Yeah, I think so. That's grandfather. Would you believe all the family artifacts, Betty and Millie sold them off? Everything. And as you do with a family that's gone. Had a big old German family Bible like this, about that thick. Eh, put it in dollar bills. It's interesting here, they quote you as saying, I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, I don't think any. Oh. Who was that? That's, uh, one of Coons, my uh, brud. So who's this gentleman? That's the grandfather, I guess. John Fraley. John Fraley. That's your grandfather. Yeah, John. That's probably John Fraley. Luckily, I took pictures of him because she sold the pictures. Mm -hmm. My uncle John, they had a, a, a picture of him on sale down Rhinebeck. This this is your sister's house here, the one that's for that's sale. Now. That's a farmhouse, oh, yeah. Okay. Now, which house is this? That was the Oh, okay. Yeah, where was this house? That was your uh, oh uh, coon down in Janet's parents' house. Oh. Up on Spring Lake. Hopewell uh, Junction, huh? No, Hopewell Junction. I used to be a photographer too once upon a time. <laughs> really? Yeah, I did wedding jobs, stuff like that. Wow. Okay, now I recognize that one. Nice snowstorm. How old is that tripod? Uh, let's see. Bought this in my UCLA That's days. Probably 1955. Yeah. Pardon? About 1955 or 60. Really? Yeah. It looks older than that. Yeah. Well, it's been beat up a lot. Huh? Just been beat up. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, one of Janet's relatives. 55. I got a metal one that was, uh, oh. This is yeah, I bought that about in 49. So you use a tripod a lot for your photography? No. Used to what? Animals Would you use a, uh, a tripod? System. Yeah, yeah. Camera, sure. That's Janet again. What kind of cameras would you use? Oh, I had a. I, I was working down the road to the library, and we took a bunch of uh, cameras from the camera store and, and ran tests on them. And I bought a cheap camera. I don't know what it was, maybe eighty dollars or so, and it was doing anything that a roll of flexor would do. So that's what I use now. I've got a can and I never use it anymore. I don't do much with pictures. Thirty-five millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's the one on the road. Yeah. I sort right. of got out of it because it got pretty expensive. Everybody would ask me to go to a party, and then they don't want a set of pictures. Yeah. I didn't have time to make all that. <clears throat> so, how long were you doing photography? Because it. It shows here that uh, one of the newspaper articles that credits you with the photograph. Yeah. How long were you doing photography? For? Well, off and on, I got no idea. Maybe, maybe 15, 20 years, something like that. You took that picture. I made all those pictures. That's Eleanor Roosevelt. Yeah. Wow. 
These you took all of these photographs yeah. here. Okay. How about that, the one of Eleanor. Should be one in there of uh, your your girlfriend there, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. Oh, yeah, we just found it. Yeah. yeah. That's what uh, he said. Oh, some sort of a big deal, Prince or or something like that. certainly do appreciate your sharing all this. Pardon? We appreciate your sharing all this information with us. Yeah, okay. Yeah, hey, listen, uh, see where that, that uh, scroll is, Mary. Should be in, uh, hopefully, in, in Carl's room. Scroll? It, yeah, it's about, about a yay high. And I think somebody in uh, Kingston might be interested in that. It, it's a map, like, mm -hmm. and uh, it's got current names on it. It might even have uh, names of towns that were put underwater with the reservoirs. I don't know. <coughs> that must have been some sort of hand woven, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah. <coughs> yeah, it looks like it came right off the loom. Can you imagine we're here, probably. what time it must take to make something like that? Oh, yeah. What I'm amazed at is the, huh? is the condition of it. Yeah. This thing's... Well, it's in a... I got it in a... Um, oh, what you may call it? Uh, a cedar chest. Oh, okay. So... Uh, that helps. It probably hasn't been out of that cedar chest in, uh, by me. 30, 40 years. What's it have to look at it, you know? It's beautiful. Piece. The air's not good for it. No, no, that's true. It's a, such a nice piece, it almost looks new, and yet it's over 150 years old. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I imagine that might be worth something as an antique, huh? Oh, there, yeah. that's it. Okay, good drill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one of these hanging at the Elmendorf. Huh? Is it? There's one of these hanging at the Elmendorf. Really? Yeah. 1859? 1859, uh, yeah. My family used to hold the mortgage on the Elmendorf. On the building there? Yeah. Yeah. Ha uh ha. -huh. I didn't really. I did, I did probably the second time I've looked at it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to open it. We, we're, uh, I think this is identical to the one at, uh, although, wait a minute. Oh no, this is Ulster County. Ulster, yeah. It's not, oh, not, not oh, here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my. Mm -hmm. Wow. I would think somebody would be interested in it. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's David Baker. Uh, he's the uh, early uh, historian. You see names here that you uh, recognize? That's right. They have the individual um, <coughs> owners' names on each house in those days. And even the property uh, the lines. For Honkton. Port Ewan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this would be a whole new study here. He had this a long time? Pardon? If you own this a long time? Oh yeah, it's always been in the family. Yeah. Now why Ulster rather than this side? Well that must be the connection of the two families together. Family members would keep important papers for the other family members. You know, like if their house burned down they'd have Kind of like what we do with the hurricanes now. We keep well, when I, when I was a kid, there was a, a metal box in the upstairs of the farmhouse. Somebody got rid of it. But I went in at one time, and there was records of uh, 
transactions of buying and selling slaves, stuff like that. So yeah, they <laughs> they did that too. Yeah. But they, they had slaves working for them, you know? You mentioned that at one time you your family held the uh, mortgage on the Elmendorf. That's right. Do you yeah. recall when that was or and why? Well, uh, let's see, I was probably about five or six years old, so that would be probably in the you know, probably early 30s, around the, the Depression time. What, Depression was 29. Mm -hmm. So uh, in those days, nobody, you couldn't get a job. And I was a little boy, and fellows with uh, college education would come walking up the road and ask for a job. I think it was a dollar a day because they had to eat, you know. And uh, so I couldn't, I couldn't help. This one guy came up, and uh, a foreign person, and he talked to me. We had to pick up. Uh, it was probably about 37, 38, somewhere in there. And he said, can't you get the dad to get me a job? Well, I said, dad, can't you hire him? He hired him, and then I was here for 30-some years. <laughs> but he was from Czechoslovakia. So, and he was uh, relation, I guess, to the barracks in Upper Red Hook. Friend or relation, one or the other. He used to go up there every now and then to, to see them. And I guess uh, they're, most of them are gone. Susie is still here. She's still, what is she, 90 something? She's still down a bar. But when I was a kid in the Upper Red Hook School, she had a car. Uh, what the heck were they? It's an old car, but uh, you know, uh, an old name car. But she would drive back and forth in that car. She never got married. But I guess she took care of of all her kids, and she might still have the first dollar she ever made. But her brothers and sisters she took care of. And I understand that here and there she bought a piece of property or a house for. Some of the brothers and sisters. She made pretty good money down the board, I guess. She's part of the structure almost. Now, did you? Did your family ever own the Elmendorf, or do you just own no. the mortgage? On no. It? No. Willie Pulver owned it then, and uh, one of his sons worked here on the farm with Dad. Hell of a nice, nice guy. So. Uh, and then he left here, he went down to the city. But all the Pulver boys are all dead. And all the girls are still alive. There was, uh, I think, three boys and four girls. But like uh, Enie, she cleans uh, the elf down here. So, and it was, I believe it was her husband I think his name was Charlie that built that little concrete block place there that he sold maybe hot dogs or something like that out of. Hmm. And then the front door, Willie had a, whether he put the front door in or what, and on the north side of the house, he had a little store there. And I'd stop in now and then buy things, candy bars, or, or if I needed something, whatever he sold, you know. But uh, he, I think he always had hard times. And his wife, her name I think was Lottie. And uh, oh, I heard different stories about uh, well when they when they first took it over. Maybe even dead people in the thing. Mm. But uh, <laughs> nothing, nothing you would. But the kids, I guess, slept upstairs uh, on the south end of the house. But seven kids, nine people in there, it takes take a little room. But uh, it's a far cry from, I, I haven't been inside, I was, I was in, well, 
he had a bar there on the north side of the house. And uh, I went in with my father once to the bar. I guess he wanted to see Willie, probably about the mortgage. And uh, you go in the door and you couldn't see. That stayed there for four or five minutes before you could see anybody in there. It was completely dark. And I doubt now that it's that dark, is it? <laughs> um, some of it is. is I'll, it? I'll take you through. Anytime you want to see that, I'll take you through. Well. Okay, I think this is to wrap things up for today. I really do appreciate your taking the time well, that's okay. to let us do this. Well, you know, some of those things I know, and probably nobody else, a lot of that information dies as the people go by. Now here on the farm, uh, my uncle told me there was an Indian burial ground here once upon a time, but... You haven't found it? No, okay. but I could believe it because some parts of the farm, you could dig the soil with your hands. And I would imagine Indians had too much uh, in the line of, you know, implement shovels and stuff like that. And that would... Uh, I I had the uh, I was taught well I had a tenant house up for sale, and uh, the real estate person oh don't tell anybody that. <laughs> What's the relationship with the the big uh, house across the road? They the last year the TV show. Um, what's the what's that show? Um, they rented the house out to, um, what's that mafia show called? I can't think of the name of it. Oh, The Sopranos. The Sopranos. The Sopranos filmed across the road last year? Yes, so uh, I didn't see it. Yeah. But somebody said they took pictures of the farmhouse. They filmed at, the, I, visited them, I, uh, I visited them when they were filming at that farmhouse. Now, who's, whose farmhouse is that? I don't know. I don't oh. know which, which one it was? Where was it? That's the, the big apple orchard on the other side. The uh, uh, Oriole, it's not Oriole um, apples, no? That's me. But that's not, that's not any place on the other side of the road. No. Ah. Okay. They did that uh, uh, something. One of them was filmed over here to uh, really. But uh, my daughter saw that, saw that movie on the TV, and she said that they had pictures of our farmhouse on it. Which house? This house or? Down there. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But I don't think they never filmed in that house that I know of. So there's the original farmhouse, then the place you were in 15 years, and then here. No, no, no. Oh. I was in what uh, it was. Uh, I lived there when I was a kid in the farmhouse. Then when I got married, I lived in uh, 15 years in the little house down the road there. That house is oh, must be 150 years old or so. <coughs> I had people come in. Uh, when I was a kid, old people, oh, you know, I used to live in that house. I said, yeah, okay. But, no, there's, and that, that house is, uh, I took care of it all my life, did everything, and uh, my sister had Betty sign over to her. And in some strange way, but Betty died, and they didn't. They wouldn't allow an autopsy on her. I don't know. But to the point now, I don't need it. But it's a shame that all uh, the family heirlooms they turn it into dollar bills. It's terrible. Yeah. Money don't mean anything, really. You know. My my idea of money was. Roof over your head, food on the table, that's all you need. Yeah. 
The, uh, the house that's in the paper now for sale, uh, it says about a four acre farmhouse for sale, just in last week's paper. Three acres. Three acres. Which one is that? <coughs> that's the farmhouse that's down there. That's the original. That's what they're selling. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, anybody buys it's crazy because they got a bad neighbor. Me. They also have a leaking <laughs> oil tank. Anybody that's put on my property, <clears throat> criminal trespass, every time. They'll spend their years in a, sitting in front of a judge. So, you don't get me how to get even. It's got a leaking oil tank, too. What'd you say, babe? It's got a leaking oil tank. Yeah, they, uh, Betty, she, uh, a tree came down on the house and smashed the porch pretty good. So uh, I cut it up for her. And she got insurance money, stuck it in her pocket, never picked the house. There's a 500-gallon oil tank that leaked there. I'm trying to cover that up, forget about it. And uh, oh, several things like that. Whoever buys it is going to be you know, those things could be pretty expensive. If I had gotten a house, I figured it would cost me easy just to bring it to decent shape, a hundred grand, no problem. Because you just let it go. And now it's been on fire. So uh, it really should have burned up. Uh, my granddaughter, I was up here, that was the day that I got the Forever Farmland thing. And I was tired and I was kind of sick. So uh, she called me up and she said, Johnny, the, uh, it looks like the farmhouse is on fire. I said, Ken, and she said, yeah. I said, well, call 911. Now, if I told her to forget it, the house would be gone. So she called 911 and there was like 26 fire units. My uh, grandson was down there that they were from all over and they put the fire out. The house is still there. Well, the thing they were worried about is the original part of the house, the kitchen part, was a sodic. It was, um, was what? It was mud walls. Oh, yeah. Mud and straw walls. And but it must have been, I haven't, I haven't been near the house in over a year and a half probably. But it must have been awful hot because the uh, tin roof and uh, sections of it is rusted, paint burned off of it. So it must have been pretty hot inside. And they said uh, uh, electrical, the firemen. But also there was another thing said to me uh, before it was before it was turned over to them. My nephew said to me, uh, you know, the place ought to burn, we'll collect, collect the insurance on it. Well, it almost burned. So I can't say that they did it, but possible, you know. But if they had intended to collect insurance, by me turning it in, they kind of screwed them up a little bit. It turned into the fire alarm in, you know. But I, it was my home. I couldn't see it burn. Any more? You want to ask? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there is, but uh, oh, I want to take a, uh, I want to shoot a couple of the pictures we're looking at, the, the, uh, the documents, just as a close up. But uh, uh, it makes me think of other questions, maybe for another time. Pardon? I'm think I'll st I'm starting to think about questions for another time. All right, yeah, you know, that's, you know. that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just lived right. down the other end of uh, Pitcher Lane on Bud's Corners. It was the um, Fire Robin's house, or the um, who was the last one? Um, Barrett's. Barrett's. The Barrett's or the is. Fire Robin's? Right by you know where Linden Farm. Linden Farms house is? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's the next one after that. 
on the big turn. Okay, on the big curve. Yeah. Big house. Yeah. Do you remember who lived there? <laughs> Those houses, uh, I believe the owners of them, probably ownership passed over three or four times oh, in yeah. my time. There was, there was Tinkle Paws was the name? Never lived here, I don't think, did they? Yeah, 1800, yeah. Okay, well, think of boys live in uh, Columbia. Columbia County. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, uh, one of the girls went to school with me. Oh. But they were uh, at a fruit farm in Columbia County. I think they sort of lost it, <laughs> went bankrupt. They packed apples and everything, and they the, the name of their pack was Tinkle Pack. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, I wondered. Huh? I, I've seen that. Uh, there, there's a sign somewhere. On a building. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. That was, uh, I guess that was even a storage too. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, things that, uh, I was trying to think of somebody that I know that would know things about Red Oak, and I guess they're about all dead. And I got one put in the grave, the other one on the banana field. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I was sick. I got that flu, and I was sick, really sick. I thought I was, every breath was the last one. And uh, it lasted, I'm just barely getting over now, it's over three months. And my doctor said uh, there a lot of them were at least two months and a half. And this one guy I do business with said he had it for six months. Yeah, with a fever. Well, yeah, you just don't get better. And antibiotics, like taking a glass of water. Huh. And with other, uh, last fall I had a heart attack. Didn't really, I thought it was, but I didn't. Call a doctor and I sat in a chair there and I said, well, let's see if it gets better. Well, it did after a while. So uh, I told my doctor about it. He, he sent me to uh, uh, a heart specialist and uh, they put me through these tests down in the hospital. I said, yeah, you had a heart attack. So I'm on. Right now, all I'm taking for it is really uh, it's a blood pressure pill and a baby aspirin every day. With some other junk that I take, you know. <laughs> well, if you got high, you got high blood pressure, sort of, right? Yeah. Yeah, I take a couple. That of that's a that. that's a trigger for a heart attack, you know. Cool. And a trigger for high blood pressure is uh, things not going right, you know. I I went to see the doctor. I said, you know what? I'm all alone here, year after year, and then my family moves in, and I said, probably my blood pressure went into orbit. So he took the, take, he said, 138 over 70, he said, have another 10 people move in. <laughs> <coughs> but we're going to have the other 10 people, aren't we? Aren't we? Yeah, I wrote everything on the calendar for you. Huh? I wrote it all on the calendar when everybody's coming. Okay, well, what we're going to do is uh, in the next few weeks, you might think of some other things yeah. you might want to share with us, and we may have a few more questions, so well, I'll, I'll get in touch, and maybe we can do this again, or maybe we can take a few pictures of you at different places on the farm. Uh, you know, farm the farm so it doesn't look so great building. anymore. Is that still something, that uh, old still, is that something I could take a picture of? Uh, <laughs> I, I got it buried, sort of. It's a, it's a big thing. It's about this big around. It looks like sort of like a barrel, and it's got uh, holes where the apparently the uh, the heat went through or, or something. I don't know just, but it was a piece of a damn good size still. They made uh, I would say made. Probably a few gallons a day or more. <laughs> but Dad had that. I had two, two or three pieces of it. Uh -huh. 
But that was, uh, uh, you didn't talk about that. Well, prohibition. this yeah. thing with uh, uh, prohibition, Cokenham, he was the uh, county sheriff. Uh -huh. And he was, mm, 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 but they had this uh, murder out east of here, and the whole family was murdered. Husband, wife, and all the kids. And he was the sheriff at the time, and he investigated it. And I think they knew who it was. But he got to be quite financially independent after that, you know? And uh, that, that prohibition, the money rolled, you know? So the people were going to squeal on somebody or squeal on whoever was making the booze and they went out there and murdered the whole family. Mm. Like, Is that a long time ago? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably, I, I wouldn't, either before my time or when I was a little. Well, if it was prohibition, maybe. it had to be in the, in huh? the uh, 20s and 30s. When was prohibition? 19... Yeah. It was in the 20s. It was during prohibition. Yeah. 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 So it had to be just before your time. Yeah. But over next door here, uh, there was a farmhouse there and they were making booze all the time. And I come, come right by with a school bus. There's sheriff's cars there, state police cars there. <laughs> and they're making it right and left. Well, right next door here, that bus outfit was here, and uh, they uh, were heavy in drugs, and uh, the sheriffs would be over there with marijuana hanging over their head, drying. Huge. Nobody ever got arrested. But then so I heard that there was a state police upper, you know, uh, officer or something that was in partnership with it. And then uh, apparently he didn't get his cut and one of them got arrested. And apparently they came across with the money but it was just forgotten about. Amrod, one of the uh, Amrods. Uh, but they used those buses. The trooper told me that. Uh, I used, I thought they used the buses uh, just to move it around, and he said that's what the buses were for, was for moving drugs. And the state police knew that. Mm -hmm. But they never arrested anybody. So it must have been some sort of fix in on it, you know. So the house next door here was a kid her age, uh, he was making crack cocaine upstairs and set the house on fire. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Colorful history. Where is that? We um, had to take the good with the bad, you know. How did I find that uh, flat rock where George Washington? I don't believe you can find it. Oh, really? I imagine so. Growing up, I don't know if I I, I know where it is. Yeah. And uh, you go up. To the end of Spencer Drive, and there's a hill there, and the last time I saw it, you couldn't get in there because it all uh, brambled. Yeah. But I saw it, God, when I was a kid, that would be uh, 65 years ago. Spencer Drive, that's on That's the right next. up here. That's the next road. You go out Route 9, make a right, yeah. go up um, maybe Lake. at three quarters of a mile before oh. Spring Lake. Oh, okay. It's where the Jehovah Witness yeah, Hall yeah, used yeah. to be, and now yeah. it's like a insurance okay. something. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's that road, and you go all the way up to the top, and at the top of that road, the hill that you see, once you go over that hill, is where the big pot is. Okay. But they have, you know, it's all development up there now, so. Oh. Up Spring Lake? No, no. before Spring no. Lake, it's no. Spencer Drive. Ah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Really, the rock is probably just more than Here's Rockefeller 150 Island. yards off yeah, of my right park. It's Spencer Drive. Oh, it's on, oh, so it's it's up that road. Yeah. 
at the end. At the end. Because our property, see that pond there? That's yeah. our big pond. Okay. This is all our property here. Mm -hmm. And it comes right up and it goes past Spencer Drive and then it comes back around. It's kind of funny shaped. But it's not, you can walk through the woods to get to Spring Lake Road. But that rock would be near the end of this road? Yeah. Or? Yeah. It, it would be just about. It would be the top of the hill. Down the hill might go to the north a little bit higher, but there was a, a high spot there, and uh, they told me about it when I was a kid. I went up there one time, and you could see it would be a nice place to have a yeah because a cookout this is all, on a rock like that. You couldn't start a fire or anything. This is through here, mm -hmm. so you could you you were kind of sheltered on these three sides, but you could see you know anybody coming from the flats here because mm -hmm. all like where you live is all the flats. Right. And you got to imagine it years ago when there was no houses and, and everything. Now down here at this intersection, this map shows Coker Town. I never noticed yeah, that. Yeah, that's out there. It's oh, yeah. a little that's dirt road. The, that's all down all a little further. Yeah. 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 Um, where Spring Lake Road forks off, Yeah. Uh -huh. you have Turkey, Turkey Hill goes this way, Spring Lake goes that way. Just after you stay on, you know, Turkey Hill Road, <coughs> there's a stream. <coughs> and right after that on the left hand side by um, Eddie A. Parker, <coughs> is it still yeah, called that? It's, no, it's Center. something else now. It used to be Eddie A. Parker. Right. Eddie Parker but it's just Center. before that and that road goes back in there and it, it connects back to the back side of Spring Lake. Mm -hmm. Now you're right, about, you're right about here where it says Feller on, on this side of the road, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. Yep, right and where the first L is. And then when you say this pond, how is this pond connected with this property? It's we all. Know it's both sides of this the is one piece of property. This the house is separate. Uh huh. Okay. This is nine acres here or seven. What? How many acres is the house on? Six point three or seven, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And then, um, and then the rest of it is all over here. Plus, we own the tenant house down the road, which was the house he was born in. Ah. Uh -huh. And the then where's the old, old house? Right, right where the E is, just about. Oh, really? Okay. And then our property comes around and surrounds the back of it. There's farm property over here and farm property over there. And then where's the uh, the other house, the one the where tenant? 15 years in? Just Let's back that way a little bit. Right, yeah, about halfway between that road and okay. Route 9, and, and on just the left, on that side. On, on this side? No, on oh, the side. other side. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just west of the cold Yeah, there's store. more property on the other side of the road than there is here. Got it, okay. But the old house is on this <laughs> side. Yeah. Yeah. Might like to try to find that rock sometime. It might be uh, to wonder somebody... Uh, Doesn't there was a, a piece of ground up there, I think about 10 acres, that a Rockefeller owned, and it's on that piece of property. And uh, uh, I don't believe it was ever sold or developed, really. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's landlocked. Huh? I think oh. that property is landlocked. Yeah. You couldn't, they could, because otherwise they would have. I, I remember hearing something about that. that you can't get to Well, he lived in a little shack down just off of uh, Spring Lake Road. And then you have to give up ingress and egress uh, rights and everything. Just in off Route 9, maybe mm, 150 yards. There's a little bit of building, and I really don't think I ever met the man. But maybe I did. Somebody, I think then too, maybe he drove a school bus once one time. But it would be a heck of a place to, to build a house because it's high, you know. Where's that uh, yearbook? Oh, you, you had a couple of pictures here or something. Yeah. Hmm. Well, this was fun. It was interesting. Pardon? This was interesting. It's what? Interesting. This is yeah. the first time I've done this. Yeah. So, but we need, I think we need to make it a regular practice. Yeah, and we're neighbors. You know, I live right down Pitcher and Bud's Corners there. Used to be. Neighbors were... Oh, I see what you mean. No, no, but I mean a uh, 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 neighbor a few years ago was... Uh, Quite a few years ago, yeah, we'd be neighbors. Now, uh, you know who that is? <laughs> they're only neighbors uh, 100 feet away. Okay. Do you know who that is? Who is this? That, that's my first wife. Wow. Now you had to see the look on Jesse's face. She went, 
What? <laughs> oh, here's the yearbook. Uh, what page is that on in here? Oh, it's only a few pages on it. Because there wasn't many seniors. And this is out of which school? Red Hook. Hard Scrabble. They used to Hard call Scrabble. it Hard Scrabble. They still do. They call the yearbooks Hard Scrabble. I'm an antique now. So are you, right? <laughs> I've got some of the small family Bibles, but not the, the uh, where they were all written down in there, you know. That one's gone. That's what we understand. Goes back to when they came back over on the boat, you know. I'm terrible. Come here, money. Like that blanket. Yeah, I could sell, probably sell that blanket for pretty good money. But uh, money's not that important. That's a nice piece. It's really a nice yeah, piece. Yeah. I was expecting, you know, when you said the age of it, I was expecting something all tattered. That yeah. thing looks almost new. <coughs> you know, the cotton throws you buy today look oh, just yeah, very much yeah. like that. That thing's heavy. Yes, I bet it is. You gotta remember, yeah. we made that back before. The kids I went to school with, oh, yeah. some of them are still around. They, they, we don't know each other. I would know them, but they wouldn't know me. Well, the thing is, when they brought electric to on um, uh, Route Nine, my grandfather bought the the poles and the wires and everything, and brought. He own, owns the poles mm. and and the wiring. Of course, and us, uh, from Route Nine to the farmhouse, the whole line was seven hundred dollars. We had to pay for it, mm -hmm. and uh, Central Hudson likes to think they own it now, but they were supposed to maintain.